That's a yes, Lord, praise right now. Give God some praise. Glory to his holy name. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. We thank Lady Tucker and Terrain stayed on him. God want to tell someone this morning, stay on the Lord's side. Yes, Lord. In spite of all our trials and tribulations, stay on the Lord's side. Amen, amen, and hey amen. Let us rest on our feet. And I want to say it's good to see you this morning. God bless you. God bless you and may keep you in the protection of his arms. Yes, Lord, for our call to worship this morning. As David said, I was glad when they said unto me, you see, somebody ought to have a little bit of gladness on this Sunday morning. As David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, I don't know about you, but I feel glad this morning that God allowed me another opportunity to come into the house of the Lord. Uh, now, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, our feet shall stand within our gates, O oh, Jerusalem. Amen. We may be seated and we're going to ask Lady Tucker and the congregation to give us an opening selection.
Now see, we want to let somebody know that in spite of, I still have the praise inside of me. You see, every now and again, you got to encourage yourself and press your way through by telling the Lord that I still have the praise inside of me. You see, the enemy's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. He'll try to take your praise away. But you must say, like Lady Tucker said, and I still have the praise inside of me. Amen, amen, and amen. Father God, we come standing, O oh Lord, in your awesome presence. Thanking you, O oh Holy Master, for who you are. Loving on you, Lord, because you first loved us. Loving on you, Holy Master, because we know, God, that your love is unconditional. And we thank you, O oh Lord God, for giving us the very best that you had. And that man by the name of Jesus the Christ. The one, O oh Holy Master, who hung, suffered, bled, and died. The one, O oh God, who rose bright and early on that Sunday morning. O oh Lord God, since I have established your deity, I have established, O oh Lord God, your supremacy. And God, I have established that we know your only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ. And now, O oh Holy Master, we invoke the presence of your Holy Spirit, asking you, O oh Holy Master, to saturate the atmosphere in this place, asking you, O oh Lord God, to saturate the atmosphere in our hearts. God, because we know, God, if the presence of you is on the inside, then the praises will be heard on the outside. And God, we just want to praise your name, God. Praise you to the fullest, God, because the Bible tells us that God inhabits the praise of his people. God, we thank you, God, for just allowing us to breathe the breath of life one more time. And God, as we come before your presence, we pray, God, that our worship be acceptable unto you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. We ask Green Bethel Gospel Choir to give us a selection. Amen. And it's good to see you this morning, Green Bethel. Hey, man, God is still in the blessing business. Hey, man. Yes, Lord. Do you know the man? Do you know the man? Do you know the man? Oh, he's my Lord. Good God. Oh, yeah. Jesus woke me up this morning. Jesus woke me up this morning. Jesus woke me up this morning. Oh, he started me on If I couldn't say one, if I couldn't say one, if I couldn't say one, you know I'd just wait.
Jesus woke me up this morning. Oh, he started me on my way. Jesus. 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 Lord Jesus. He woke me up early this morning. He started me out on my way. He let me see a brand new day. When I was sick, thought I couldn't get well. He healed my body. Now I got to tell it. Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus. He's been my mother since mother been gone. He's been my father since father been gone. He is my friend when I'm all alone. He's been my bread in a starving land. He's been my water when I get thirsty. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, he's the friend of mine. You know, during this time in our lives, we can use a good friend. I'm talking about a friend that's closer than a brother. And you know, since we're living in the 21st century, how about a friend that's closer than a lover? I'm talking about no one but Jesus. You see, Jesus is a friend of mine, meaning you must claim him for yourself. And you must know him for yourself. And to know him means that you move beyond a friendship and develop an intimate relationship. It means that you must spend a little time with the Lord, learn his voice, just as you know your child's voice when they call your name. We ought to know the Lord's voice when he speaks to us like only he can. 
I'm trying to tell you now that Jesus is a friend of mine. Amen. Amen. And amen. And you know, this leads us into our sermon this morning. Turn with me to Job chapter 19, verse 25. Job chapter 19, verse 25. And our text we come from the New King James Version. standing in your presence Father God with our heads bowed O oh Lord in the locks of our shoulders and God we have your holy and divine word in our hands and Lord as our eyes behold the scripture and Lord as our fingers walk down the text I pray O oh holy master that your words be written on our hearts. Be written, O Holy Master, so that we will know beyond any shadow of a doubt. Know, O Lord God, that you're still sitting on the throne. And know, God, beyond any shadow of a doubt of our soul's salvation. Knowing, Lord, that you are our Redeemer. And, Lord, you paid the price for all our sins when you hung, suffered, bled and died and right now, oh holy master, I pray God, that our hearts, oh Lord our minds, oh God and our ears, Lord God can be focused on thee and thee alone we pray, oh holy master that you feed us till we won't no more. Feed us, oh Lord, that spiritual food that's good for the body, mind, and soul. And then, oh Holy Master, the overflow God, I pray, oh Holy Master, that we can take your presence into the earth. And God, let the sinner know that the wages of sin is death. And let them know that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus the Christ. And then, O oh Holy Master, I pray, God, that we can witness, we can witness to someone, God, of how you transform our life. And now, O oh Holy Master, as we take our text, I pray, God, that you speak to us with thy anointing Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, we claim it all. Amen, amen, and amen. Our text, we come from Job chapter 19, verse 25, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. You may be seated in the presence of God for a subject matter I know. I know it sounds as if it's a simple statement, but I know means that you got to know what you're talking about that follows after that statement. I know is a simple statement, but it has a complex meaning. When you hear I know, I want you to listen carefully of the preceding words that come out of the speaker's mouth. Job is a book of human sufferings. Man's response, God's sovereignty, and finally God's restoration. In a matter of hours, Job lost everything that was important to him. Am I right about it? 
except his wife and his life. But however, through it all, Job maintained his identity as a God-fearing man. My brothers and sisters, it's so easy for us to lose our identity as God-fearing men and women. Amen. When the wind blows, we move in the direction that the wind blows. Uh -huh. But yet, I know that we should be rooted and grounded in Jesus the Christ. Amen. Meaning that when the wind blow, I know means that I will stand firm on the Lord. Yes. And Job was a God-fearing man. And he gained a deeper understanding of just who God is. Sometimes God must allow heartache and pain, trials and tribulations, hurt and discomfort, and yes, even sickness come our way. But you know that maybe they don't grab our attention, so God must allow the money to be gone and you to lose your cell phone just so you can depend on him. Just maybe God allowed the pandemic to come and take us away from one another just so we can focus on him. Uh -huh. I know there's a little thing called quarantine, but maybe quarantine means it's time for God to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. Amen. As my grandson, as I said to my grandson, let's have a grown man conversation. <laughs> and I'm trying to tell someone it's time to have a grown man conversation. Amen. And that is a conversation between you and the Lord. It means that you must know who God is Amen. and what God has done in your life. Amen. Enjoy the text preacher. Job was able to grasp a deeper understanding of who God is. Because in your darkest hour, God shines brightest. Let me say that one more time. In your darkest hour, when it seems as if all hope is gone, God shines brightest. Uh, if you don't believe me, the Bible says at midnight. Uh, midnight is the darkest hour, meaning that God shines his brightest. If you don't believe me, then just step into a dark room and turn on a light and watch what happens. I know means that I know who God is. God's relationship, your relationship with the Lord, it must move from one level to the next. And when it moves from one level to the next, then you can stand on, I know that the Lord is my Redeemer. It means you can stand and proclaim that beyond any shadow of a doubt, regardless of the circumstance and happenstance that surrounds us in this walk of life. In chapter 1, Job is described as a perfect and upright in chapter 1, Job is described as one who feared God. In chapter 1, Job is described as one who stayed away from evil. The question is, how would God describe you? I want you to know that the Lord bragged on that man by the name of Job. How would God describe you? What would God say about you? How will you describe yourself? Will you be described as a sometime in Christian? Uh -huh. Sometime I'm for you, Lord, but sometimes I'm not. Will you be described as the type of Christian that'll say, I can lay my religion down? Well, if you can lay your religion down, it means you never had it in the first place. If you can lay your religion down, it means that you had a form of godliness. It means you was trying to impersonate God, but you really don't know who God is. So let me look back to the subject of the text. The subject is, I know. It means that I know for your own self. But if you have a form of godliness, you just going off of what somebody else said. It means that you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord. You haven't experienced God for yourself. Job, if you look at Job, you can say an imperfect man that is covered by the perfect work of redemption. Kind of mean, he's talking about all of us. Imperfect people 
covered by the perfect blood of Jesus the Christ. So change your description by inviting Jesus into your heart. You notice if I didn't say into your life, because if you merely invite him into your life, then you can easily turn your back on him and move the other direction. But if you have Jesus in your heart, it means that he's the very source of your life. Because when the heart beat, the blood flows. Am I right about it? When the heart beat, the blood flows. And when the blood flows, it carries oxygen to your mind. All I'm trying to say is that Jesus uh, is the source of our life. Uh, if we get him into our heart, then I know beyond any shadow of a doubt uh, that Jesus is my redeemer. Now, uh, folk will often make backward comments to insinuate that you've done something wrong. Am I right about it? But the proof is in the pudding. You know, I preached that sermon one time back. The proof is in the pudding. Now go back to verse number one. Job is described as perfect and upright. That's the first verse in the first chapter. One who feared God and stayed away from evil. Now this brings us back to the sermon title. I know Job's friends, they should change their response to I know. Job is not like that. In other words, Job's friends, they should say I know that Job is not like that. In order for someone to say I know that you are not like that. It means that you must walk upright before man, woman, boy, and girl. It means that you must exemplify Christ in everything that you do or say. Now, when you look at chapter 19, you see Job's second response to Bildad's accusations. Job has already lost everything and everyone that was close to him. And now his friends want to kick him while he's down. My brothers and sisters, it seems as if when you fall down and still a someone helping you get back up, everybody want to kick you and walk on you and tread on you. But I want you to know that out of the dirt comes a brand new life. Am I right about it? If you don't believe me, then just look back over your life. I want you to know someone once kicked dirt on us and that someone is no one but Satan. But out of the dirt came a brand new life. It means that new life sprung out of the ground. While you was under the darkness of sin, I want you to know God had already had a plan in place for your redemption. Just keep on listening. Job, he felt unfairly treated by God. Now here is a man who is described as perfect and upright. Yet he felt like he was unfairly treated by God. My brothers and sisters, even the most profound Christian at time would feel unfairly treated by God. If you haven't been there, then just allow, just watch as God take one of your loved ones away. Just watch as God bring sickness your way. Just watch as God make your money a little funnier. Just watch as God make church folk come in one way and act another way. Then you would know that you know in Job's chapter 16 and 19, Job says God attacks him. And Job says that God is angry with him. I'm trying to show you how Job felt. Job said that God tears his body apart. Remember, this is a man who is described as perfect and upright. Yet he feels as if God is coming against him. Oh, I think about Job. It seems as if his friends are on one side and God is on the other side. I want you to know trouble is on every leaning side. But I also want you to know that trouble don't last always. 
It means that all of us have a storm to go through. Everyone must go through Samaria. But when you come out, you're on the other side. Uh, may I draw your attention that God allowed the Israelites to cross over on dry ground. Uh, so God moved the waters of trouble and trial out of my way, God, and allow me to pass from earth to glory. Allow you to pass from earth to glory on dry ground. Meaning I know that the blood of Jesus, I know that the blood of Jesus will seal and protect. Now, as we look, I want you to know that Job had accusations on his left side. And Job felt like God was against him on his right side. But here's what I want you to know about Job through it all, yet he kept the faith. And if you don't believe me, then look at that verse number 25 one more time. Job said, for I know that my Redeemer lives. Am I right about it? And you know, we can stop right there. It means that you must know that God lives in your own life in spite of what take place all around you you gotta know that the Lord lives uh, and when you know that the Lord lives then you gotta know you must keep serving the almighty God am I right about it now look at the text of uh, one more time Job says and he shall stand at last on earth am I right about it meaning you gotta know that the Lord is coming back for you and I Am I right about it? Now, let's move on down to the first point of the message. The first point is uh, salvation requires self-assurance. Am I right about it? Have you heard or uh, have you talked to someone when you ask them, are you saved? And they say, well, I want you to know that's the wrong answer right there. When you ask someone if they save, they come and they follow, I am, but uh, that's the wrong answer right there. When you ask Ask someone if they save, they should know beyond any shadow of a doubt uh, because they know that they have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You must have confidence in uh, your own forgiveness. Am I right about it? Self assurance in your own soul salvation. It means that you must know beyond any shadow of a doubt uh, you know that you are saved. Am I right about it? Now, I want to tell you something that maybe you know it and maybe you don't. The enemy will use anything and everything to separate you from the love of God. When calamity occur in your life, Satan will use that opportunity to create doubt in your mind. Am I right about it? If you are not careful, uh, it will take up riveting in your heart. Uh, so if you allow the enemy to infiltrate your mind, uh, I want you to know that he'll move from your mind uh, and get into your heart. Uh, and if he get into your heart, uh, then he'll call you uh, to move away from God. Uh, and turn your back on the Lord. Uh, so I know, mean, uh, you know uh, that you know the tricks of the enemy. I know, mean, uh, I know that Jesus is my redeemer. Am I right about it? Uh, I know, means, uh, if you don't want the Lord to, if you don't want the enemy to take up reverence in your heart, uh, I know, mean, you gotta hit him with a little Romans 8 and 38. Uh, I know, mean, you gotta let let it know, for I am, uh, I am persuaded uh, that neither death nor principality, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, uh, nor angels, uh, nor principalities, uh, nor powers, uh, nor things present, uh, nor things to come, uh, nor height, uh, nor death, uh, nor any other creature. I know means uh, you won't be separated from the Lord. Uh, I know means uh, you know that bad things happen to good people uh, I know means uh, you know trouble don't last always uh, I know means uh, you know that God loves you uh, I know means uh, that you know God looks beyond your faults uh, I know means uh, I will stand on the Lord's side uh, I know you need a little 
you need a little I know in your life. Uh, so walk upright before men. Uh, walk with your chest out uh, because you're walking uh, not in pride, uh, but you're walking because I know uh, that my Redeemer lives. Am I right about it? I know that God, which is in Christ Jesus, uh, our Lord and Savior, now with that I know I got to put a little asterisk right by this warning. Now here is the warning for you. You can't enjoy the blessings of the word if you're not obedient to the word. You see, some people want to claim the blessing of the text, uh, but they don't want to be obedient to the word of God. Uh, they want the cake and, and eat it too, uh, but life ain't like that. Uh, I know I got to hear God's word. Uh, I know means uh, I got to be obedient to God's word. Uh, I know means uh, I got to trust in the Lord uh, and lean not to my own understanding. Uh, I know means uh, I'm not in Impressed uh, by people that know the scripture, can quote it forward and backwards. Uh, I know means uh, I know that the enemy know it too. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, then go to Matthew 4 and 6. Uh, Satan said, uh, For it is written, uh, mean that the enemy know uh, there's something about the word. Uh, but I know means uh, I got a deeper understanding. Uh, I know means uh, it's not so. And I say, uh, I know me uh, that I have him in my heart. Uh, I know me uh, nothing or no one. Uh, I know me uh, I will not uh, be separated from the Lord. Uh, I know me uh, I know that I once was lost, uh, but now I'm found. Uh, I know me uh, I was condemned, uh, but now I'm saved. Uh, am I right about it? Now let's move on down. Uh, let's go. Uh, and grab the second point. Uh, when you look at the text, uh, I want you to know uh, that Satan will. He'll use people uh, to get the people. Am I right about it? Uh, let me say that one more time. Uh, Satan will uh, use people uh, to get the people. Uh, now let me now let that marinate. Uh, while you let it marinate, uh, I'm going to take a simple apple juice. Satan will use people to get the people because Satan knows that people are influenced by other people. Am I right about it? If you don't believe me, then just look at any church all across the land and country. You'll find that uh, the church is being influenced uh, by people in the world. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, I know we got it backwards. Uh, the church should uh, be influencing people. Uh, it should be influencing people in the world uh, and not people influencing the church. Satan, with you, people that's close to you, to get to you. If you don't believe me, then let's walk the text and look at the verse number three. You have, Job says, you have insulted me uh, ten times. Am I right about it? Now let me tell you that Job was talking to one of his friends. Am I right about it? So Job said uh, you're supposed to be my friend but yet you have uh, insulted me uh, ten times. Uh, Job says uh, and you have attacked me uh, without shame. Am I right about it? Uh, but if you move on down uh, somewhere around that first number 25 uh, Job responds in. Job says I know uh, good God Almighty I know uh, am I right about it I know uh, that's what Job uh, response was to his friends uh, when the enemy come against you uh, and it seems as if all oh, hope is gone uh, I know uh, mean you gotta hit it with a little I know, uh, and then you follow that statement with, uh, I know uh, he is my redeemer. Demonic spirits, they cannot move freely about. They require a host to transport them to and fro, and you can become a taxi. 
So I know me. You must know that you won't let the enemy hitchhike with you. Am I right about it? I know me. Uh, you know that he won't ride. Uh, but I know me. Uh, I see you coming a mile away. Uh, and I'm going to smash the gas uh, and to my horn. Uh, meaning uh, I'm going to go by you uh, real fast. Uh, and when I toot my horn, uh, you know what it say. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. So toot your horn. Uh, get a little glory. Hallelujah. And cruise on by. Move on by the trouble. Uh, because I know uh, that there's blessings on the other side. Demonic spirits will hitchhike with you. If you're not careful, they'll drive. If you don't believe me, then look at Matthew 8 and 28. The Bible says Jesus was met by demons. And the demons caught a ride by two men. You know the story. Jesus cast them out. But when he cast them out, the demon couldn't move. In the atmosphere. So when Jesus got ready to cast the demons out. The demons said Lord let us go into the swine. Am I right about it? It means that a demonic spirit uh, must ask permission uh, before he attack you. Uh, I know me. Uh, I know me. Uh, nothing moves uh, except that God allow it to move. Uh, I know me. Uh, I can't claim that statement uh, if I haven't accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Am I right about it? Uh, now here is another point. Uh, Matthew 8 and 28. Uh, when the demons went into the swine, uh, the swine ran down the hill uh, and the swine ran into the ocean. Uh, I know me, uh, that swine know uh, that he didn't want no part uh, of the enemy riding in him. Am I right about it? So the swine said, uh, I know uh, the evil spirit uh, don't supposed to be there. So the swine said, uh, I know I got to get rid of him. Uh, and he ran down the hill. I know me. I know there's some stuff I got to get rid of. I know me. You know that Jesus will cover you with his precious blood. Am I right about it? The swine, they would rather perish than allow demonic spirits to take up revenue in their life. Guard your heart and mind by filling them with the presence of God. And you do it by, you do it through his word. And Jesus is the word. You can become a taxi if you're not careful. Now, for our third and final point. Forget the bad and remember the good. It seems as if that's a hard thing for grown folk to do. So we need to look at little children. They'll fall out one day and they friends on the same day. But grown folk will uh, fall out one day and they'll stay enemies until God called them home. Uh, I know means uh, I know God uh, won't allow that in his kingdom. Uh, I know means uh, you got to get right down here uh, in the training ground uh, before you enter heaven. Am I right about it? I know mean uh, you can't do it by yourself. Uh, I know me, uh, you know that the Lord will, uh, the Lord will, uh, the Lord will, uh, the Lord will uh, clean you up from the inside out. Uh, I know me uh, to acknowledge the hurt and the negativity. Am I right about it? The hurt and the negativity that come from friends uh, and those close to you. And then uh, once you acknowledge it, uh, you don't let it stick to you. You move move on down uh, and you say I know uh, that my redeemer lives am I right about it uh, let me tell you uh, stop focusing on the bad uh, which is only a small percentage of 
of your life. Uh, if you want proof, uh, then look in the mirror. Uh, I'm going to give you some proof here and now. Uh, when you look over your life, uh, you'll find some bad moments. Uh, but when you glance again, uh, you'll know that the bad uh, don't last always. Am I right about it? And then you know uh, that it's only uh, a little part uh, of your life. Uh, because I know uh, means I know uh, that I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I know me that he will uh, take up revenue in my life. Am I right about it? With Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When Jesus come in, uh, when Jesus take up revenues, uh, I know me. Uh, I know that the scales are tipped uh, and they tipped in my favor. Am I right about it? If you don't believe me, uh, then look at the text uh, one more time. I know that my Redeemer lives uh, and he shall stand on the earth. Am I right about it? I know me. Uh, let me tell you, uh, I know me. Uh, it's time to go to the next level. I know me. Uh, I know there's a little more to it uh, than what you see right there. I know me. Uh, Job was going through it. Uh, I know me. Uh, Job said uh, I know my redeemer. Am I right about it? It means that Job looked beyond uh, the here and now uh, and he looked to the future and he said I know I know uh, I know my redeemer Look for the bad and see the good. You see, I want you to notice that Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. Now I want you to notice, I want you to know, you already know that Job was in the Old Testament. Jesus was in the New Testament. Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. And he made that statement before Jesus was hanging on the cross. Am I right about it? Job made that statement uh, before Jesus was resurrected from the grave. Am I right about it? Job, uh, it means that Job used, uh, he looked at his trouble uh, and he looked through his trouble. Let me say it again. Uh, he looked at his trouble and then he looked through his trouble. He looked at his trouble uh, with his humanness uh, because we all human uh, in the flesh. Am I right about it? But then Job Job uh, looked through his trouble. He used his spiritual eyesight and he looked in the future and he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. Look beyond the here and now and know that your Redeemer lives. Know that he shall stand at last on earth. Rest upon your feet. I want you to look at the words of the text, I and my. I and my is saying that you and you alone must know for yourself. You must claim the Lord and know the Lord for yourself. I know my Redeemer lives means I know that this is only temporary. And since I'm saved, since you're saved, since we're saved, then you can say we know that we have a home not made by man's hand. I know that Jesus came through 42 generations to get to you I know that Jesus did not sin but I also know that Jesus can tell us all about sin I know that Jesus died on the cross I know that they pierced him in his side I know when he dropped his head, he said, it is finished. I know that Jesus stayed in the grave, in the tomb for three days. I know that Jesus rose 
with all power in His hand. I know that He ascended back to heaven where He came. I know means I know He sent sent in majesty to the right of the Father. I know means I know He's interceding on my behalf. If you want that, if you want that assurance of I know, then it's three simple things you must do. Confess, believe, and receive. If you can confess, believe, and receive, then you can claim Jesus as your Redeemer. Redeemer is, you know that He will vindicate you. And you know that the Lord will defend you. This battle is not yours. This battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. So since I know that this battle is not yours, I know I'm going to trust to the Lord to see me through. Come on, choir.